Hi, this is Hina, the voice behind Dr. T. Before we proceed to the video, how about hitting the bell icon to get notified every single time we upload a new video. And hey, you can also check out our playlist on our channel for more awesome videos. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Got it. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all are doing fine. In this video, we are going to learn about the left foot fractures. Now I was going through the playlist on my channel and I realized that I haven't made videos on oral surgery topics for like, you know, ages. So this topic would be a good starter to take up oral surgery once again. So without wasting any further time, let us proceed to this topic. And yes, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also don't forget to smash that like button. It motivates me to create more videos of this kind for you all. Okay, so let us proceed. Left foot fractures have been classically described as left foot 1, 2 and 3 by Ren Lee Ford in 1901. So this person did an experiment where he used intact skull of the cadavers and he tried to fracture the skull by using low velocity forces. Okay. So once he did the experiment, he got a particular fracture line and he said that it is Lee Fort 1. And then once again, he did the experiment, he got another line. He said it is fracture 2 and 3. So mostly the fracture lines he was getting could be broadly classified into Lee Fort 1, 2 and 3. But keep in mind that in real life, when somebody has, you know, when somebody faces any kind of trauma, it's not necessary or in fact, it is not at all necessary that, that he will have one particular type of left foot fracture. He could have a combination of these. For example, he could have on the left side, left foot 2 and on the right side, left foot 1 fracture. So, combination can happen also. So, this was the classical classification given by Ren Lee Ford who did the experiment. Now, quick description of, you know, what these fractures are. The left foot one is called the low level or the guerin fracture, also called as the floating maxilla. Why? Because if you see the fracture, it will be something like this. So the entire, you know, maxillary segment, it is kind of floating. You know, you can actually, you know, feel the movement if you examine such patient. So that is why it is called as the floating maxilla. And low level, obviously, because this is the middle third of the face right so this is the lowest one okay class 2 is something like this and class 3 is something like this so this is the most lowest one that is why it is called the low level fracture okay now if you come across a patient having left foot one fracture and you examine the palate of the patient you will find ecchymosis in the palate in the area of the greater palatine foramen bilaterally so this is a classical finding of left foot one fracture and it is called as the guerin sign okay talking about the left foot two it is called as the pyramidal fracture because if you look at the shape of this fracture it looks like a pyramid now the third one is the left foot three fracture also called as suprazygomatic fracture because obviously it is above the zygomatic bone and also craniofacial disjunction. Okay, because the cranium and the face, they are nothing Bixby. She woke up, I don't know why. Okay, so I was saying that we have disjunction of the cranium with the face. That is why it is called as the craniofacial disjunction. Now, this classification was modified in 1993 by Marciani and he introduced Lefort 4 in which we have Lefort 2 or 3 fracture and in addition to that we have cranial base fracture and this Lefort 4 is further sub-classified into Lefort 4a, 4b, 4c about which we can learn later because right now we are going to focus on the left foot one fracture in detail okay this is the nasal septum okay now this opening this is the anterior nasal aperture okay so this is the lateral wall of the nose okay now let us say we have a horizontal impact on the maxilla 
means we have a horizontal force here just above the apices of the teeth maxillary teeth so in that case what will happen the lateral margin of the anterior nasal aperture will be involved means the fracture will involve it also we have the maxillary sinus here right so the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus below the zygomatic buttress will be involved also this is the nasal septum right so lower one third of the nasal septum will be involved so we will have a fracture line like this and now it will extend posteriorly and it will go behind the tuberosity now if we try to visualize it using a beautiful drawing made by me it would look something like this we have the lateral nasal wall that is fractured so you can see the entire segment is kind of away from this segment so we can see that the lateral nasal wall is involved and here you can see that this fracture line is above the apices of the teeth okay and again if you try to visualize it using a drawing it would look something like this so here you can see we have a lateral fracture behind the tuberosity and this right here this is the pterygoid laminae which is also fractured here we have the pterygo maxillary fissure which is also involved in this fracture line so this is the left foot one fracture low level guerin floating maxilla okay now we will be covering left foot 2 and left foot 3 in the upcoming videos but before that let me know if you found the video helpful by commenting liking and sharing my work so till we meet next time take care allah hafiz